Hi, my name is Ian Duncan. I'm the author of Scheme for Max, an open source package for Max MSP that enables us to script and live code Max in Scheme Lisp. And in this video, we're going to take a look at getting started with Scheme for Max, namely how to get code into the interpreter and executing in a few different ways. Okay, I've got here a Max patcher on the left. And I've got the Max console on the right, which you'll want open when you're working with Scheme for Max to see messages and output, and a text editor. So this assumes you've successfully installed Scheme for Max. If you haven't done that yet, you can check out the videos on installing for both Windows and Macintosh. And we are able to make an S4M object without any error messages appearing. So how do we get some code into Scheme for Max and get it doing things? Well, the first way is similar to the JavaScript object. We can specify a file name after S4M, and that will get loaded when the object is created. So I've made a file called main.scheme. There we go. I'm going to load it up into my text editor. And you can see that my file has a couple of definitions and a call to post at the beginning and a post at the bottom. This is something I do to make sure that it's successfully loaded and you can see our messages on the console up there. Now, if you try to load a file and you get an error that the file is not found, you try to load a bunk file, you'll see a message in your console that the file was not found. And if you know the file does exist, the culprit is probably that your max path does not include the directory on which you have the file. So you have to go up to File Preferences and make sure that the directory you're using is listed in the File Preferences. So I've got mine in a directory called Code, and I've got it here. If I want to add more directories, it's quite simple. Just add them, and you can optionally choose Scanning the Subfolders. Now this is what I call the main file, and the main file is going to get reloaded if you recreate the object, and we'll see our messages again. There we go. And it also gets recreated if we reset the interpreter. So resetting the interpreter will reload the main file. And there we go. And reset also wipes out any other active definitions, as does recreating the object. So that's pretty much just like the JavaScript object. So we've made a couple of definitions and a couple of functions. Well, we made a function and a definition, so let's just try those out. Put a message box underneath our S4M object so we can see output. And we will uh, show you the next way of getting code into Scheme for Max, and that is to send a string into the S4M object and ask for it to be evaluated. So for example, if I wanted to output the value of my var, I could make a message that says out zero my var in parentheses. Now in order for this to run successfully, I need to create a couple of extra helper objects. One is two symbol. Having problems typing in the dark here. And that converts the above into a string so that Max doesn't get confused by the parentheses banging up against the symbols. And then we'll also do a prepend eval string. And I'll show you what that outputs as well before it goes into Scheme for Max. Okay, there's the full message, eval string, and then a string with all of our scheme code. So let's just put that there. And we send in out zero my var. My var was defined in the main file, and we see it come out in the box. Now there's a third way putting scheme code into the interpreter. And that is 
to send it a message directly into Outlet 0 without any parentheses. So when we do this, Max thinks we're sending three atoms out, zero, and MyVar, and S4M interprets a list of atoms as being a list that we want evaluated. So it acts just as if they are surrounded by parentheses. Of course, we're not going to see any change here. There we go. OK, so that's another way of getting code into Scheme for Max Interpreter. This method is particularly handy for making short one-liners that, that interact with other max widgets using the dollar arguments. So we could make a number sign. And now this is going to become out zero, whatever number. And this will be interpreted by Scheme for Max as a call to out zero the number. And you'll see them coming out the bottom. There we go. Now, I'm going to make a little more room here and show you a convenience object for working this way. And that is the uh, REPL B patcher. So let's just buy ourselves some screen real estate and make a B patcher of the S4M REPL. And that gives us a small graphic text editor. And we can use this to send text into Scheme for Max. And this, again, has to go through the two symbol and the prepend eval string. OK. And it's got some control keys on the top um, for sending out text. I think these are not working properly on Windows. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so that's something that needs to be patched up later. But I'll demonstrate what's going on here. If I want to say post uh, hello world, and I hit enter, and we see it come out. If I want to have a multi-line statement, perhaps I want to do two things with a begin block. OK. And now on Macintosh, I can use the Control key, go Control E to output it. I think that might not work on Windows, but I can always turn this back on and output them. OK, you can see both executed. Here we have the console output, and there we have from out zero. Now finally, another way of loading code that's really useful is the read message. So if we send Scheme for Max a message that is read and then a file name, note that we don't need quotation marks. I've made a second file and I've called it module. I'm going to split the window here to show that to you. OK, and it again starts with some posting and ends with posting. I'll clear the console so we can see that that's working. And again, as long as this file is on your Mac search path, that's going to run. And under the hood, read loads up the file in Max into a string and then sends it to Scheme for Max for evaluation. Uh, now, what that means is that reading this file does not wipe out any currently active definitions. That sometimes gets called hot code, code reloading, hot reloading. And I think believe that's not possible without some really cumbersome workarounds with the JavaScript object. So it's a really nice workflow because you can keep definitions in one file and functions that are working with those definitions in another and iteratively change them as you go. So for example, we have my var is 99 and I've made a function here in module called func and it takes two arguments and it outputs both of them plus my var. So we'll uh, make a message to call that. Let's say func1 and 2. And we should see output out the bottom, 1, 2, and whatever the current value of my var is. There we go. Now let's pretend that we change my var. 
I'm going to change it. Let me use this thing up here. So we'll set my var, and this time it's going to be 300. Now my var is 300, and perhaps I change my function. I'm going to change it so it's uh, x, y, and my var all multiplied instead of added. I write that file. I can reload it. The function has changed. My var is still 300. And when I call it, I get 600. So it's an example of splitting our code into two modules and hot reloading one or the other. And the final way of loading code in Scheme for Max is we can do it directly from files. So for example, if we wanted to make sure that module was loaded on startup, we could use the load from max function. In this case, we need a quotation marks because that's what the load function inside scheme expects. And now if I save this and I reset the interpreter. We're going to reload both. Okay, there we go. We see modules loading and mains loading. And there's no problem with continually reloading module as we change it or resetting to get them both reloaded. So that gives us a lot of flexibility on when code is loaded and what gets redefined. Finally, um, there is a way for you to send scheme code directly from your text editor into Scheme for Max while you're working to highlight a block and send it. And I detail that in the video on editor integration. It's a bit more complicated. It involves some OSC objects. But if you get into Scheme for Max, I think you'll find that is uh, by far the most productive way of working. So I'd encourage you to check out that video. Um, and I have instructions for doing that in Vim, but it is definitely possible in other editors as well. I should also mention that you can, if you want, double click the S4M object and open the built-in editor, much like with JavaScript. Um, it's interesting. It seems like it did not load properly. And the next thing I was going to say is it does have some issues. So I don't know why that happened. Um, so that, that kind of works. I wouldn't really recommend you use it anyway. I mean, most of the time, um, I'm not sure why this is happening. Most of the time I have tested saving files and, and reloading them through that facility. But it's not like that editor has any syntax highlighting or anything. So you're better off using something that has uh, paren matching so you don't go crazy trying to match up your parentheses. OK, so that covers, I guess, four or five different ways of getting code into Scheme for Max and making the interpreter do things. And I hope you enjoyed the video. There are going to be more tutorials and walkthroughs coming. So please subscribe to the channel. It's great if you want to like and share it because it does help raise awareness of the project. And it's still early days, so the more beta testers we can get on it, the better. And of course, if you want to be kept abreast of announcements, please join the Google group or watch the GitHub repository. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy Scheme for Max.